Hello Linux lovers, my name's Wimpy, welcome to my world. Um, so, it's going to be retro gaming on the Raspberry Pi project time today. Um, it's time to try and get that as a release out uh, before Christmas as I initially had planned to do. I've not been well for the last few days, which is why I've not been streaming or doing much of anything really. But we'll try and fix that now. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, this was originally recorded live on twitch.tv slash Wimpy's World. So if you want to join in interactively, then uh, come and give us a follow over there. Hello, Big Pod. Welcome back. How are you? Are you, um, are you still working <laughs> or are you, um, are you finished for the year? And welcome back, Linux Paul. How are you doing today? What... Um, what cup of tea are you currently enjoying or did you enjoy earlier? I've got my usual, um, you know, English breakfast tea, even though it's midday. I'm trying out a few new things as well in the stream. So I'm a little bit cautious about what um, Twitch is telling me, but hopefully it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, it's gonna be retro home today. Darjeeling. Oh, with with some honey. Yes, I, I used to work with somebody who had Darjeeling and honey. I've never taken to um, Darjeeling. Oh, actually, no, Darjeeling is all right. Um, what's the other one I'm not keen on that everyone raves about? Very traditional. Anyway, um, it's been a while since I worked on Retro Home. I can't actually remember the state I left it in, but the objective for today is to go and take a look at because I know, I know there's commits that I haven't made and I'm not sure what they are, but the objective today is to, um, excuse the pun, put a bow on it and produce the first ALF image that I can publish somewhere. I don't know where yet. Um, suggestions in chat, please, are where I can uh, jam a approximately 700 megabyte image because I haven't got any web hosting set up or anything like that just yet. Something I'll have to do in the new year. But I want to make this available so that people can download it and test it. It is not uh, like the finished article. It is very much a rough cut at the moment. But I think it's time to start getting some feedback. And also, whilst I was uh, thinking about this, I've thought of something else I want to add to the, um, in air quotes, desktop experience. Uh, which is GNOME Discs for manipulating disk images. Because I have um, built my first desk pie, which has an SSD. And so what I'm thinking is I can boot off the SD card, get into... <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Was that Takov? <laughs> Good morning, Takov. Hello. Um, boot off the SD card, go into the desktop, and then do a copy of the SD card over the internal SSD in order to install uh, the distro. So these are, you know, ideas, ideas for, for what I'm thinking of having a go at. Um, but the objective is let's get a working version as an alpha image out there. So welcome back, Graham. Hello, welcome back. And also um, uh, Jeff, hello, hello. And a Merry Christmas to all of you that are celebrating Christmas over the coming week or so. Um, I, uh, I'm i gonna be cooking, um, I suppose, what is the closest thing to a traditional Christmas dinner for my family today, a little bit later on. That's just for the three of us, um, because, um, you know, lockdown and all that nonsense. Um, but we, our tradition is to actually have um, uh, a, tuna, a tuna salad on Christmas Day, um, for weird reasons. I've forgotten to move back to, uh, to this view. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be doing um, what is effectively a Christmas dinner uh, for my family later today. Hello, King Egypt. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, thank you for those of you that have stopped by. I'm going to um, politely ignore um, Twitch's bitrate warnings. Um, uh, so long as everyone who's in here tells me that the broadcast is coming through fine and well, we'll just assume uh, Twitch is being picky and we'll, um, we'll move on. I did do a quick check while the countdown was running and it seems like source quality is available and stuff like that. Can't guarantee on the transcodes because, you know, not partnered and all the rest of it. But hopefully yeah, it's good enough. 
So uh, let me just click this here. So Takov says, by the way, I just saw a curious post regarding the Raspberry Pi 4. If you add a render group to the user and DT overlay and 300 meg of GPU uh, and OBS portable builds without issues and VA API might well be available. Yes, I think you may be on something there. Um, you may need to use the full KMS driver. I'm not sure if you'd get away with the fake KMS driver, but yeah, um, VA API should be a thing. I don't know how well accelerated it might be. It may require, like in the snap, I build a custom version of FFmpeg inside the snap where I turn on some different acceleration features. I think it may be necessary to do the same with that FFmpeg that the Pi is going to use for it to be um, accelerated. But yeah, it um, it should be possible. Um, it is something I've been thinking about taking a look at, um, but you know, it's not high on my list of priorities because it's um, a curiosity rather than something that I would, I would use, um, you know, a lot. Um, anyway, whilst I've been, uh, you know, recovering, uh, this space it may not look different to you but uh, we've got a complete makeover in here so uh, the streaming setup here is now on par with the lodge in terms of the how everything's set up and configured so it's actually a really um, chilled out uh, environment and all the rubbish that you couldn't see that was over here the other day is all gone it's a nice clean clean room again uh, yeah, definitely improving, Esme. Thank you for asking. So, I think um, we'll get into it. Um. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> So yeah, um, there's some additional lighting effects going on as well because I've I've re I've relocated my um, uh, Elgato key lights, uh, so they're in a better position now, and they are also part of the lighting effects that go along with these, um, you know, channel point um, redemptions and all the rest of it. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of them in there and I've got some ideas for some interesting stuff in the new year as well and the desk behind me uh, I think I may have to wake the cameras up but the desk behind me um, that's ready I've got the overhead camera there <laughs> and the um, and the <laughs> oh look at that look it actually works they all work in combination with each other so there we go uh, confetti and uh, Chelsea cucumber at the same time so yeah I'm I'm watching all of the lighting kick off here um, so <laughs> I'm glad you like the channel points they're a lot of fun to make what's this what did Linux Paul have to say here so uh, Paul says I was watching a music streamer last night who was streaming to get similar lighting integrations with channel points right yeah I I've seen a few people sort of doing this um, I <laughs> you can't see the ones that are going off whilst this happens but it all goes red and flashing um, whilst uh, whilst those ones run I think I just need to bring up um, uh, a different overview <laughs> And as you can see, you know they're, they're they're all they're all working. I'll let you all have fun with this stuff because I, know, I, if you've not seen them before, I know they're kind of novel. Um, I can't find. Oh, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. There it is. There it is. That's what I want. There we go. So yeah, um, Sharma. Hello. How are you? Um, yeah, it's going well. Right then. Um, let's do this thing. So. It's retro home, it's clean it up, build it, and test it on very briefly. I don't think I'm actually going to test any games, I'm just going to assume that works. It's making sure the the base OS sort of functions. So we'll, um, we'll head over 
<laughs> glad you're doing well right then so um, this is the project that we're going to be working on it's retro home here it is on github and this is a new operating system that I've been working on uh, with some input from friends anyone's welcome to contribute it's a new <laughs> A new, a new operating system for the Raspberry Pi for retro gaming. So it's like a uh, a new take on something like Recall Box or Retro Pi. So that's that's the project we're going to be working on, and the objective today is to get a new working alpha image that I can upload somewhere. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to put that. So ideas for where I can dump a large image would be helpful. Some sort of file hosting. I've got one idea. I don't know if it's a good one so far. Oh, my bitrate has gone bananas. I wonder if I can modify this midstream. Let's just take a look at what's going on here and try and regain control. Um, let's drop that there. Sorry about this. Just noticed that my bitrate has spiked up massively and it should not do that. So let's see if we can bring it in into control. Okay. So we'll go with that. We'll see if um, we'll see if uh, Twitch recovers. It's doing very strange things. Okay. Um, okay. Paul says he's got a weird admission to make. Uh, been trying out Fedora. Yeah. And you think you like the vanilla gnome? I've not tried um, Fedora for a while, but I think if you wanted to sort of get the pure GNOME experience, that's the that's the place to uh, that's the place to get it. I think that's like um, the reference example, if you like. Right. Okay. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on what's going on with the bit rate here. I don't know why that's gone so crackers, but um, let's see if that recovers in a in a little moment. Um, right, so this is the project. So let's um, let's go and find my code editor, and we'll just get to the right place. So um, let's think now. Development. Where was this? This is in Wimpy's World Retro Home. Uh, no, it's not. Why is it not there? <laughs> I thought I'd put this project in here no okay uh, oh of course this project is in public because I share it with a virtual machine right okay so I'm I, it's a journey of remember remembering how the heck this all works because it's been a good well probably three or four weeks maybe since I've worked on this um, Okay then, so engage brain. Uh, let's have a look at Git Kraken to see what the state of the uh, repository is. Let's see what's outstanding. All right, okay, so these are some unstaged files here. I know that I was working on some handheld devices and I've made no further progress on that. Um, so I'm just gonna park the handheld bits because what we're going to make today is an image that is a generic image for the Raspberry Pi so no special cases just take your Raspberry Pi two three or four put the image on a card boot it and you should be off to the races so we're going to park all of the customizations what's this boot configuration at the moment here oh okay fine that's fine and then this is the script itself that builds the images. So, okay, so that's a NesPy 4. If has anyone got the Retro Flag, Retro Flag NesPy 4 case? That's the one with like the SSD and a cartridge. Um, I'm not mega impressed with that. I have to say, it's it doesn't actually work as advertised. Um, my goodness, my bandwidth is all over the show. Hopefully that will that will calm down. Um, 
momentarily. Okay, so that's fine because that's for a specific image. And then I commented out some stages here which we'll bring back in because we'll rebuild the image entirely. So I think all of this I can leave uncommitted because that's going to be in a code path. We aren't going to uh, execute because we're going to run the Pi version only. So if we just bring up the build script and we'll just make you a bit smaller now. Um, we'll do all of these stages completely so the whole image gets built from scratch. And I need to decide what alpha version this is going to be. Alpha 5 seems fair because I made a video at some point that said I'd made alpha 4 so I think we'll call it alpha 5 even though that seems a bit ridiculous, a bit, a bit like high alpha number but we'll go with that. And then if we look in here we've got the various models that we're trying to support the case models and then somewhere up here we should have some conditionals here they are so these are the conditionals for the different case types that I've been working on and it looks like that's all fine because this is saying what I've called it remix I'll have to rename that at some point but that's the GPI the GPI mate plus the megabit and the retro flag so there's nothing in there that's uncommitted that's specific to a generic pie image so that's good okay so I think oh composite oh yes that's it so one of the things that I did I'm just remembering now one of the things that I did was um, I changed uh, let's have a look let's do this in the project there's these boot and root directories if I just tree boot um, these have got the different um, configuration files that need to be overlaid into the image based on the model with the, the, the case that we're building for and then similarly root is a bunch of files that I add to the root file system in order to um, you know build the image and configure it and the reason and these were orig all of this stuff was originally here docs inside the script which made the script absolutely massive it was thousands of lines long it's now 750 lines long which is a bit more manageable and also this this change oh, I've over over shot this change uh, is sort of a stepping stone to turning these into Debian packages that get installed into the image at some future date so then we can deliver updates so we're not at that stage yet but this is you know all of the assets are separate from the build script so makes it a little easier to uh, to manage now right is that minimize there we go right okay I think we can uh, we can get on with this let's just catch up with uh, some of the conversations here so um, I see that Esme is saying that she's hoping to try out uh, Fedora and KDE soon. Okay, are these are these plans for the holiday season? These uh, distro experimentations, and then uh, King Egypt. Uh, this is all off the back of um, Paul saying about how he's been trying uh, vanilla GNOME with Fedora and enjoying that experience. And then um, King Egypt says um, that they're really quite enjoying uh, Zorin with XFCE. The the Zorin boys do make a uh, well, not boys these days, are they? <laughs> the Zorin brothers do make um, a good distro, that's for sure. Um, hello, Henrik. Welcome back. How are you? And then uh, Paul goes on to say, it all started as a challenge to see how long I could use GNOME with zero extensions and I'm starting to prefer it. Well, there we go. That's uh, probably good feedback for the for the team then. So are there any extensions um, in the Fedora experience at all or is it is it entirely free? Because I, I seem to remember there was a couple that they had, but I'm, I might be wrong about that.
So um, King Egypt says, I keep meaning to buy that NES case. So thanks for the warning. Yeah, so that NES Pi 4 case with the SSD, I do not recommend. I'll explain why. It comes with an SSD enclosure and it also comes with a whole bunch of capabilities to do safe shutdown and safe power off. And those two features are incompatible with one another. So they've... <laughs> I'm rewriting their drivers and I'm trying to figure out how to work around it but frankly I think I'm gonna to have to make an image for the Nez Pi 4 which doesn't have the full advertised feature set because in my mind it's impossible to deliver because they reuse GPIO pins as part of the SSD um, stuff as well as the um, safe power on power off and looking at their GitHub, there's a couple of enlightened people that have spotted that it's not compatible but haven't actually dug into why. So I have done some research there. So it's an expensive case and it's it doesn't really do what it does. I would recommend, if you want to get something like that, this here, this DeskPi Pro V2 case is excellent. Uh, I'm going to be building one of these on a stream at some point um, and they are, abs I absolutely love these. I'm obviously not endorsed by them or anything like that. I have bought this and I love it. And I've got this one here which is now my dev box and I'm going to build another one for the lodge. Um, but it's awesome. It comes with a decent cooler and a fan you can't hear the fan the engineering internally is really very good it's a an aluminium case they extend the USB ports you get two USB 2 ports at the front which I've got the controllers plugged into which I think is great for a set-top box and then you have all the rest of the IO around the back and it also converts the micro HDMI into two full-sized HDMI um, ports around the back. So these DeskPies are really good and they're only slightly more expensive than the Nez Pi 2, uh, the Nez Pi 4 SSD case and this has the option of using um, M.2 SSDs and SATA SSDs and I've put a 2 terabyte SATA SSD in this. So I really, I'm super impressed with these and these have got safe shutdown and all the rest of it. Excellent, excellently engineered in my opinion so there we go there's a little aside <laughs> um thank you luke yes uh i am on on the mend uh on the mend for sure um Right then, hello, hello Adam, welcome back. How are you? It's been a while since uh, you've been by these parts, probably because I'm not working at the moment and therefore streaming a bit later in the day, so overlap with US time a little bit. Um, right then, so uh, there's some chat about people's experiences with different distros, so we'll let that run. Let's, um, let's get on with this and do a build. So we'll save what we've got here. And then what we'll be doing is using my virtual machine. So this is my Pi Builder virtual machine. This is uh, running under QuickMU, the other project that I work on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm hidden behind the tree. Hello, I'm here somewhere. <laughs> so um, this is um, this is all running in QuickMU, uh, which is the other project that we've been working on here. Um, so this is running an older version of Ubuntu tw oh, Ubuntu Mate 2004, and I do all of the container builds in here. So this is going to stand up foreign. Um, containers inside this VM to build this Raspberry Pi image. So I think we'll just kick this off. The other thing that may or may not work is I have apt cacher running on this VM to uh, cache the you know the package archive hits, uh, and I've had to sort of you know do some maintenance on that to expunge some um, stale packages. So we'll see how well this works. So we will run 
retro home and what is it device is just going to be raspi which is just the generic image this is going to be it and i hope that we've got all the right bits in place so my password is test by the way so it's off and running so this is going to do the whole thing i've been through this script several times in the past you can find those vods on twitch and also um, just recently I uploaded my entire live stream backlog everything we've done on Twitch here since August is now available on YouTube for posterity and in some rare cases uh, reference material for when I happened across something useful that people wanted to uh, have access to so um, let's have a look here we've got a couple of questions so let's bring some of these up here so Leo logic hello welcome welcome to the stream I tell you what let's do this everyone let's well uh, Lego logic let's welcome Lego logic to the stream everyone say hello to Lego logic um, uh, I'm being asked is this a razor keyboard so yes this is a razor keyboard um, this is a razor let's find out because I can never remember I've got a few razor keyboards now this one is a Huntsman Huntsman Tournament Edition that I have modified. So um, I've put my own keycaps, uh, artisanal um, space key there, and you'll also notice uh, the Batman. Maybe that doesn't come out too well, but that's the uh, the Batman logo on the escape key there. There we go. So this is quite a modified um, keyboard. I love this keyboard. It's great. I wish I could find one in white. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's something that I, I really like this one. Um, and I've I've got mostly razor per peripherals. Um, I really like them. So we'll let that build. Let's just come back here. We've got a couple of other things here. So I tell you what, um, Lego Logic, we're a bunch of um, Linux enthusiasts and users here. Um, are you using Linux? If so, um, what distro are you um, are you using? Or if you're not using, what distro are you thinking about having a, a go with? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then there's some talk about... Um, <laughs> so uh king egypt uh makes the admission that he's already got the desk pie and it's in his drawer yeah i think most people's raspberry pi stuff is sitting in drawers not doing very much <laughs> that's very good of them uh proactively uh giving fixes and stuff so <laughs> Um, uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, let's have a look. So, now then, Luke asks, will I be uploading to YouTube regularly in the future? Yes. Um, every live stream I do here, I will publish on YouTube within 36 hours of the original broadcast from this point forwards so they'll all go there to be archived i did a little a b test for that whole three month period to decide if i was going to put long-term vods on twitch or youtube i put one the first morning cuppa live stream on both the one on youtube had 1500 views the one on Twitch had five views, so that was a very clear, <laughs> a clear test. So I've now decided where the long-term sto archival storage is going to be, and it's going to be YouTube. And I've sort of worked out a workflow for, for doing that. And um, King, <laughs> King Egypt says, no stormtroopers, uh, not in this office. In fact, I look around. I don't think so. There's nothing Star Wars related in here. All of the Star Wars paraphernalia I had here is in the lodge. There is nothing Star Wars here. It's all Star Wars over there. 
<laughs> I, I, yeah, not even the controllers here. There's no, there's no Star Wars stuff in here at all anywhere. Um, yeah. So if you've ever seen a stream from the other place, you'll know I've got loads of mostly Imperial Star Wars stuff. Uh, you know, Darth Vader and what all the rest of it. Okay. Um, Eargasm and the microphone is great as well. What's this? The, oh, is the Razor Kraken a um, uh, microphone, Takov? Right then. Um, yeah, so Luke's just agreeing. Yeah, I think YouTube's the right place. And also, I've been thinking about making actual videos, pre-recorded videos on YouTube for uh, several years now. And I have made about 15 or 16 that I've never published because... Uh, I was never quite happy with them and it was kind of a learning process. I'm going to start trying to make one sort of pre-recorded video a week, no, every two weeks, for YouTube, which is to cover a specific topic, maybe something well, here, but cover it in a bit more depth, a bit more succinctly, sort of, you know, 10 to 15 minutes max, something like that, uh, and cover some stuff there as a, as a bit more... Um, accessible you know information right then so uh, lovely for you to all stop by how's is everyone still working or have you uh, you packed it in for Christmas I'm asking these questions while we wait for this build to run in the background let's uh, there it is it's still whirring so uh, the apt cache hasn't fallen over so that's that's positive <laughs> Stormtrooper plush. <laughs> no, I didn't say a week. Two, every two weeks. I know that I won't be able to do it every week. I know I won't have time. So the idea, my plan is this. To stream on Mondays, Wednesday, Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. And then use Tuesdays and Thursdays to make sure the videos of the streams get to YouTube and also plan, record and edit a video. And I reckon those Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think two weeks of Tuesdays and Thursday evenings should be enough time to script, record, edit and publish a video. So I think every two weeks is probably achievable. Once a week is not, absolutely not. <clears throat> at my second job looking after two children yeah i know tell me about it yeah well twitch i don't know what's going on with your bandwidth monitoring but we've been we've been a, a hair under the the right amount for ages now and it's still moaning anyway so this is just going to tick and run i don't know that there's anything else here i want to dig into in more detail i do have some handheld devices um, I'm going to be uh, assembling those soon. So now I've got that working behind me. In fact, one moment. <laughs> but all things being well, this might work. Let's give this a try. So uh, I've got NDI cameras, uh, say NDI, I've got cameras which I've created an NDI encoder for. So there we go, that's the back of my head. <laughs> and that is uh, the desk behind me. So um, earlier in the year, I did build some PCs on that desk using this setup. So uh, that is all up and running again uh, to do the same kind of thing. So um, I will be doing some um, building Raspberry Pi cases and stuff like that um, in the not too distant future. But uh, yeah, there we go. So that's uh, that's the back and I, I can't hear it myself, but I think there's a slight audio fade because I have to compensate for the audio delay for that being uh, slow because it's coming over the network. So it's more latent video. So there we go. That's uh, that's a thing that I'm uh, I'm I'm glad is working again. 
Uh, let's have a look. So Luke asks, is the plan to manually build these images on your machine or will you be automating it somehow? Certainly these first images I'm going to build on my machine um, to, to sort of get them out there. I would like to automate it in some sort of CI CD pipeline, but these images are massive. Like the um, before it gets compressed is a four gig image and I don't know uh, I haven't researched what CI CD platforms uh, will accommodate, you know, something like that. So I'm open to suggestions on that. If it can be automated, I would love to do that, yes. Um, so that that's definitely a goal because what I'd like to do is effectively, well, the images are basically the same with just some configuration and driver differences for the cases that they're in. Um, so when I decide something's ready for a new version, it would be good to build them all together in lockstep. Build and publish them all um, together. Yeah, so the mic dropped a few dB when I went to the other... Oh! A few dB. Oh, I tell you. So that's good feedback. Okay, I'll deal with that later. I will make a note. Um, let's just go and do that. I'll do that over here. Um, I'll make an, I know why that is now you've mentioned it. Um, I probably don't have the same filter configuration on the copy of that microphone with the different audio delay. So I will, I will fix that. Um, I have a, a little work pad full of to do's that I need to do. So I will um, just add this to do that. Right. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> right then. How many cameras do you have ready to stream? So this is Esme asking this question. Um, I have this camera that I'm talking to. One. <laughs> That's a face cam. And then we have this camera, which is the overhead cam. So that's two. I have then the same behind me. They're mostly the same cameras. So my face camera I'm talking into is a Canon M200. And the overhead cameras and the cameras behind me are secondhand Canon M100s that I have modified the firmware on to get Thank you for the follow, Raising Underscore. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, if you're new here and you use Linux, I'd love to know. Uh, if you're comfortable doing so, let us know in chat what Linux distro do you use. So I use a, a patched firmware uh, to get clean HDMI out on the Canon M100s because they're cheap on eBay. Um, and they're compatible, the lenses are compatible with my other equipment. So uh, you often get a kit lens, which means I can do that zoom on the overhead and all the rest of it. So I've got four Canon cameras in this room and then effectively there is um, uh, a, a another camera, which is this view. So this isn't a camera, but it is a capture source for the virtual desktop where you know I do the live coding and all the rest of it and then there's a sixth which is the same but for when we do gaming which is uh, a frame buffer an Nvidia frame buffer capture source so technically six cameras here um, yeah technically six cameras and six lights uh, that is being manipulated with the you know the animations and what have you so hopefully that answers <laughs> answers your question. <clears throat> um, and I I do have another capture device for that behind me, which is for when um, I do like uh, Raspberry Pi projects on that desk. Oh, actually, yeah, there's another one. Yeah, actually, this is the, this this view here. There's another capture source. <laughs> <laughs> eight because this is where we'll be using this one later this is where the raspberry pi will get hooked up in order to capture what the raspberry pi is doing so 
not a camera, but a capture source. Uh, and the same over there, I've got um, a, uh, what's it called? A Magewell USB Gen 2 uh, that I use for that desk. So it sounds like madness. Um, it's not too difficult to manage now. It used to be, uh, but it's not too difficult to manage now. <laughs> right, have a good one, Luke. Enjoy your holidays. And uh, so raising, you are using MX Linux. Are you using MX Linux because it's number one on DistroWatch or was there another reason why uh, you uh, chose that particular distro? Always interested to know how people landed on their different distributions. Right then, let's, uh, let's go back here, see how this is doing. See if I can work out where we are. Right, looks like it's doing the um, the micro desktop install at the moment. Ah, that was it actually. That was something I was going to. Ah, uh, we'll test that. We'll test this image. Yeah. So I want to add, if possible, GNOME discs to the micro desktop that I embed in this OS. Um, for reasons I explained earlier, I think it would be useful to be able to manipulate disk images, particularly because it's something for the Raspberry Pi. Um, but I'm only going to do that if it doesn't like suck in uh, tons of the GNOME sort of desktop because the, the, the desktop that exists in this is is kind of like um, an escape hatch. Um, it's not meant to be a desktop operating system. It operates like, a, by default, it operates like a console. Um, but the desktop is there as a convenience. Mostly for me whilst I'm doing the development, but then I realise that if your only computer is a Raspberry Pi, or if you give this to somebody as a, you know, uh, as a gaming device, then they can use the desktop to go and source games to put on the, you know, the on the on the emulators. Right. Okay. So I wonder if I can actually work out ahead of time. Let's. Let's go and try this theory out. Let's go and see. Oh, we've got some got some questions here. Here we go. So, hey, is that species? Hey, species. Oh, 8472. Very good. Very good. I know that reference. That's my fa that from my favorite um, Star Trek. Um, uh, what's the right term? Not season, but yeah, uh, Voyager's my favorite. So you're a Debian fan, been using it since Potato Woody, yes, so, so a good long time, nice one. I think I, I started using Debian uh, with Wheezy, was the first one that I used seriously. Yeah, Voyager. <laughs> um, and I'm a, a Debian maintainer, so although you can see here Ubuntu Mate is the project that I, you know, work on most, I do probably 90 percent of that work in Debian with the um, the Debian packaging team for Mate Desktop and Ayatana. So yeah, I'm uh, quite involved in sort of Debian package maintaining because it's a, an, an elegant way to get those packages into Ubuntu. So, uh, Raising says it was one in DistroWatch and once I started using it uh, I didn't migrate uh, but now I'm thinking uh, I can't make up my mind do I have any suggestions for Debian based modern looking no hassle just simple yes Ubuntu Mate is an excellent distribution <laughs> so as I was just saying I've been making and leading making Ubuntu Mate and leading that project for seven years now and it is a simple get out of your way um, operating system and it's what I'm using right now. It's what I use everywhere for everything. <laughs> so yeah, give it a look. Let us know how you uh, how you get on. If I if I make I did make some did make some things. Let's see if this works. Does this work? Yes, there we go. You can find out more there. There we go. I, I added some chat commands. So, uh, uh, Graham says, 
it's quite convenient these builds because we can have a chat whilst the uh, computer sits there and does my bidding so graham says i've been a big debian fan since 96 yeah i didn't i i didn't really realize debian was a thing for for such a long time not until ubuntu came around really i had no appreciation for it. I was using Slack and stuff like that uh, at that time. Thank you for the follow, Neurongal. Thank you for the follow, Neurongal. Welcome to the stream. Um, uh, we love a bit of Linux around here. If you're using Linux, let us know what distro you're. Um... Thank you for the follow, Cybreb. <laughs> and you, Cybreb, very much. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let us know if if you're using Linux. Let us know what um, what distros you're using. Yep, uh, and you're enjoying Pop on the desktop on the desktop now for a few years. Yeah, the influence of Debian has been um, massive, uh, absolutely massive. So Neurongal is using Pop OS 2004. Is that because you chose to download it and install it or because you bought one of their computers with it pre-installed? Graham says they love a bit of slackware. Yeah, well, I think very early on, it was kind of the only way to get a like a decent Linux machine. And I, I was quite sticky on that. I, I started using that in about 95 and I didn't move off it until 99. Um, and I moved from Slack to Crux um, and used that into uh, the early the early 2000s. I tried Fedora Core, I think Fedora Core 2, and bounced off that quite hard at the time. And that was the time at which uh, Ubuntu had just appeared on the scene. And I uh, installed the Warty Warthog, one of the alphas, and I then stuck with that for many years. So, uh, Rising asks, is Garuda OS good? I've not used it myself. I think Garuda is an Arch-based distribution. Is that, um, is that, am I right in saying that? I think, it, and I think it's kind of um, squarely focused at um, gaming as well. So I don't know if you're interested in just a gaming distro, I say just a gaming distro, something that's targeted at gaming or if you, something more general purpose. I've not used it. But I think it's arch based. The chat will correct me if I'm wrong about that. So, your uncle says they downloaded Pop OS and they found the workspace navigation with the keyboard shortcuts very useful. Yeah, I love a bit of uh, keyboard shortcut power. Um, I was doing some image editing earlier. Um, if you look at the about page for this channel, I redid my um, panel labels um, and I decided to learn a bunch of shortcuts to speed up that process. So I was <laughs> keyboard macroing uh, like a good in this morning, uh, remaking those images. King Egypt says, I'm not calling it Deb Ian anymore. I I don't make a conscious effort to say Deb Ian, but I think I still say Deb Ian, as in, you know, I am saying both the names. <laughs> I do, I, I think I do, I mean, but it's not it's not conscious, but I know I've been picked, <laughs> picked up on that. But yeah, I do say Deb and Ian, because uh, that's right. <laughs> um, so... This is an interesting question. So, Codefish asks this impos impossible to answer question. What's the main difference between different distros? Well, if let's let's take a simple example. If you if you just take different uh, versions of a distribution that share the same base. So, let's take the Ubuntu flavors. This is an easy place to start. The way that they differ from one another is the desktop environment that they present to the user. So everyone that makes an Ubuntu flavor 
agrees that they prefer the Ubuntu platform, but they then uh, respectfully disagree with each other about how to present the user interface to uh, their, you know, respective communities. And that's pretty great because we're all working on the same corpus of software, but we've got our own interpretation of how to present the user interface. So if you take Ubuntu, they differ by how the user interface is presented. But then when you go between, say, Fedora and Ubuntu, or Ubuntu and Arch, then of course they're different underlying OSs with different package managers. Um, and then there's more esoteric things like Dev1 and they want to remove systemd. So when you start comparing between different like, underlying platforms, the differences are quite varied and very difficult to summarize, I would. I would say. But I'm sure chat here will give you their opinions on like distros and how they differ and all the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, oranges and apples, absolutely. Yeah, and so uh, Henrik uh, is giving a good sort of summary here as well groups of distros, the package manager, the file layout, yes that can differ, the file system layout can be different, patching and repackaging, yeah security policy can be an important one, you know a lot of the distros that sit on top of like um, uh, a platform that's produced by one of the big Linux vendors like Red Hat and Ubuntu and SUSE means that you actually get a commitment to security uh, patches and updates which for some of the, well, for pretty much all of the community only distributions, well, I say community only, some of the small independent boutique distros, you don't get that at all. You know, they probably don't have a security team at all. And they're probably relying on whoever the upstream distro vendor is to provide um, security patches. So King Egypt says regarding Garuda, uh, it is Arch based. Okay, there we go. I got that right at least. Uh, it has a tuned kernel uh, and compresses swap in RAM. Okay, before using the disk, uh, you'll probably never use the swap partition. Uh, they also recompile some AUR packages. Okay, so they provide uh, packages that are specific, specific to their use cases as pre-compiles in their own package repository. I, um, it, because it's internet law, I should point out, I used to be an Arch Linux developer, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I'm familiar with the process. I used to maintain my own package repository for um, Mate Desktop before I managed to get that into the official archives in Arch. Ah, our image is built. Well, look at that. So um, that looks fine. It's a compressed image is 666 meg and the raw image is well it's four that's four gig actually because of the way it's presented um so before i get into this um adam asks an interesting project he says uh, am i familiar with the mist project yes yes i am um i do have an fpga project well technically two FPGA projects I'm working on and I'm pointing up there because it's on the top shelf um, and I, I want to dust that off in the new year uh, but it's not a mister but it is a retro computer that is um, entirely FPGA powered um, so yeah I uh, the mist is great but it doesn't I would like to have one but it doesn't interest me so much because I like to make my own things and the mist is basically just assembling the components and then using software that somebody else has already made. Uh, and in this case, what I'm doing here is making my own operating system because primarily uh, I really liked Ludo and I wanted to shine a light on how good that is. But also I wanted to learn uh, the process of building a, um, in air quotes, games console, initially on the Raspberry Pi, and then seeing where that may lead in the in the future. So, kind of a learning experience. 
Right, well now we've got this image here. I think I put the, yeah, I, I put the card in the computer over here. So what we'll do is we'll use the pass through and we'll pass through the card reader from the host into this virtual machine. And then we will, oops, we will then run up GNOME disks. And that's the card we're going to put this on. We'll just hit stop there and there. And we will, um, in fact, why are we doing it this way? Well, it doesn't matter. Restore a disk image. Uh, let's go and find it. It should be in the root of pi. Here it is. We'll do the compressed image because if this works, this will be the image that I am going to make available. So we'll open that and hit start restoring. My password is test by the way, and that will write to the SD card. So I'm in a VM here, but I've passed through the card reader to write out to the card. And then we'll actually take that card, put it in the Pi and boot it up and see if it works. <laughs> Cause like I say, it's three or four weeks since I've done anything with this. I don't even know if I left this in a functioning state. We'll, we'll have to see how we, uh, how we get on. Um, King Egypt says that the Garuda themes are, uh, lack, uh, lack some polish. Uh, Wayfire is good though. I did, I did nearly make something with Wayfire. I had to, I had to restrain myself. And, um, Adam says they're going to be interested to try out Retro Home. Uh, yes, all feedback welcome. Um, like I say, this is a very much a rough cut. It is an alpha. There are no updates. There are things that I know aren't working yet. I need to update the README. For example, I know the N64 stuff does not work at all. I know that the sega saturn performance is not where it needs to be but a lot of the other stuff works really really well really well um so i want to get some feedback on like you know maybe things i haven't tried um and see how it works uh right then and then uh hey Hey Dex, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. I see you've been streaming recently. How's that been going? Um, so Lucid Link says, I find RetroPie to be a bit of a letdown. Haven't tried Recall Box. So I did use RetroPie in, it's a long time ago now, 27 to end of 2017 to make some uh, initial like uh, retro consoles uh, which the kids loved and I was quite impressed with retro pie at the time uh, but I did modify it with some custom shaders to do CRT effects and stuff like that but overall I thought it was quite good um, now I'm not going to bag on retro pie but I tried it recently by uh, comparison and it feels quite dated now, particularly when you go into the configuration and it brings up NCURSE's interfaces for things. And it feels really jarring to be presented with that to configure stuff. And my big issue with like anything based on RetroArch is RetroArch is, Retro is amazing and extremely powerful, but I don't want to expose all of those options to the kids in the family they just want to plug the thing in put controllers in and play games they don't need to know whether they're rendering with OpenGL or OpenGL ES or SDL or a frame buffer you know none of those options need to exist so Ludo is made by the RetroArch and LibRetro team and is deliberately you know supposed to be a pared down accessible uh, you know version it uses the same libretro cores and that really jives with you know what I'm setting out to make so uh, you know I'm I'm very happy with it um, there's a few um, areas where it's incomplete like there's no Bluetooth configurer you can connect to Bluetooth devices but that 
that is kind of then lacking how, what, what device did you connect to and how do you want to use it, which is kind of why I've got this micro OS backdoor. Um, but you know, we, it will get there. Uh, it's, you know, the part of this is, it's as much about the journey as, uh, as the destination. So we'll eject this card and we'll stick it in the Raspberry Pi. So there we go, one SD card. Um, I think this should work. So I'm putting that in the front of the desk Pi. I do have the SSD hooked up, but there's nothing on it. So I think this will boot off um, the uh, SD card I've just plugged in. And I'll have to get the mouse and keyboard in just a moment. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so um, let me just bring this up. Hello, thank you very much for stopping by. This is very good of you. I'm sorry I disrupted your stream some weeks ago when I came bounding in with a raid and I didn't realise that you were broadcasting in Portuguese. So thank you very much for stopping and saying hello. <laughs> right then, and... Um, you you don't use Linux, do you? I seem to remember. So yeah, it's it's all it's all Linux a go go here today. So um, let's just take a look at some of these other messages before we get into booting the thing up. So um, King Egypt says, "Hang on a minute. Uh, have I put my Pi Zero Two in the G Pi case yet? No, I have all of that." right here next to me that's going to be something i do over this holiday season but i don't know if you saw retro flag have released the gpi case 2 which is a revised version of the case which takes a compute module 4 directly as well so i think they're rarer than hen's teeth at the moment uh, but i'd like to get my hands on one of those and have a go at getting uh, have a go at getting that working with retro home but um the g pi case with the pi zero two is the first handheld that i'm going to work on and the first one that i want to get working because it's quite you know um well known lots of people have them so i'm going to start with that one and then i've got three or four others that are more esoteric uh, that i'll have a go at getting working that's going to teach me some stuff about the controller support in Ludo, I think, um, because they're some of them are GPIO connected. Um, but then I want to do the um, the GPI two case as well. Um, and then I've got the I've got the GPI Mate um, and Mate Plus, which enables me to use the Compute Module three and Compute Module four in the GPI case. And I'd like to get that working as well. So there's a whole cornucopia because all of these things are similar you know i've got several of these handhelds that use either the pi zero two or a compute module so with each one that you do it makes it easier to do the next one so I, i'm, I'm going to be i'd hoping to be doing that over the last week but you know it didn't work out that way so starting now i'll start working on it <laughs> codefish that's very kind of you um, Codefish says that I have a good voice. I could do radio. I used to do a podcast. <laughs> also, um, it's the it's the quality of the microphone, I think. Or rather, not the quality of the microphone, but the vintage of the microphone suits me. <laughs> Should do a podcast. I need to speak to my friends that I used to do a podcast with. See, uh, see what's going on. Right then, let's... Um, Let's go and do this thing. So I've got the, oh, I've got it all hooked up. So let's uh, go here and actually turn the Raspberry Pi on and see what happens. This is gonna go one of two ways. Oh, this is encouraging. <laughs> That's a good start. That means it's, it is gonna boot off the SD card. Uh, that I've plugged in there, but the the trick is now is whether or not um, I say it's going to boot. There we go. There we go. So that's doing the file system resizing. So that's dynamically grown the file system 
to the size of the SD card. So the image you might remember was a compressed four gig image and that's a 64 gig card. So that's now expanded the file system. Oh, this is looking, this is looking quite positive. So this is the splash screen uh, that I put up. So in the background at the moment, it's now loading uh, RetroPie um, and I have a controller here. And there we go. We have booted into the thing. Now, um, there, if you've seen these streams on, on Retro Home before, you can see there's this black bar uh, underneath here. This is a quirk of the capture setup I have. Um, it, this doesn't happen when you actually plug it into displays. But, um, oh, my controller is not being registered. So that's... I wonder if that's because I haven't hooked up these USB ports properly. Okay, that might require a little bit of testing, but let's try the keyboard and see that if that's working. So I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse here, so I'll just push those other ones out of the way so I don't get confused. So if I just go to the overhead view, um, so I've just pulled out this, which is a, a wireless keyboard and mouse and the dongle, there's a single dongle around the back and this is um, wireless, not um, not uh, uh, Bluetooth. So back here, uh, I'm gonna use the keyboard. So using the keyboard, I can manipulate that and I can hear the faint click of the user interface as well. So that is uh, working. Uh, as in the things here, there's the Wi-Fi configurable thing and we can toggle the services. So this is good. Do I want to have a try at putting some games on this to test it out? I'm not sure I want to get into that today, but what we'll do is, because um, I want to add the disk manager to the micro desktop. So when you have Retro Home hooked up with a keyboard and mouse, and only when you have it hooked up with a keyboard and mouse, you can press escape on the keyboard, which will do this. And it will throw you out of the emulator and it should, in just a moment, drop you here. Oh, crikey, I do apologize, that was loud. <laughs> it will throw you to a display manager here. So what I can do now is, oops, that was the wrong thing, is choose flashback and login oh what's the password i think it's retro <laughs> um there we go and there's a micro desktop um bundled in here so it's a very very small um gnome flashback implementation and there we go oh there is a mouse on here somewhere there it is so what I'm going to do is use this to just work out if installing the um, disk manager is something that I can reasonably do because I think that would be a good addition. So this is a very trim desktop. You've just got an archive manager because I'm thinking you could use this to actually download ROMs and organize ROMs to put into the emulator. So you've got an archive manager, um, the file manager, a text editor, and then Ludo itself and then um, transmission for downloading things. And then you've got the network configurator, a terminal emulator, deconf is there at the moment. I will remove that once we get to sort of release candidate stage. That's useful for me for figuring out default settings and stuff like that in the desktop. And then we've got the Bluetooth manager and the control panel. So that's like a very, very basic desktop and I'm going to open up a terminal and then we'll make that bigger, bigger font. There we go. That's a bit better. So we'll do an apt update because the part of the image building process actually like cleans, cleanses the image. So there's no cruft left behind from the build process, including like um, stale package cache indexes and what have you. So we'll um, we'll get this updated and then we'll install. Look at installing the disk manager to see if there's a way in 
to do this in a in a sensible fashion. Right then, so Henrik's been learning JavaScript. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> Um, gl glad you like the look of it, um, Jeff. It's um, it's a it's a terrific project. I'm talking to the upstream. They know what I'm up to. Um, I've got some homework from them uh, on the N64 side of things that I had hoped I'd get to by now, but I uh, I, I didn't run out. I need to figure out how to stop that that sound being so loud when I'm doing these captures. But the good news is audio capture works. Oh, I know how to do it actually. I know how we can fix this. I've just thought of what I'm gonna, I'll bring up my notepad in a little bit and we'll make a note. So let's do sudo apt install gnome disk utility. And we'll just see, oh, Oh, well, there we go, that's fine. So there, the only thing that gets installed when I add that is that um, application because the micro OS that I've curated here has all of the other dependencies already in here. So let's try this for fun. If we go up here now, uh, where would it be? System tools? No accessories there it is discs so I should be able to do something like this here's my card reader which I'm running the OS off and here is the two terabyte SATA SSD that's inside the desk pie case so I am making this up as I go along but I wonder if I can Oh no, because I don't, that isn't a disk image yet. Okay. So I could DD it, I suppose. Does the does anyone know if the Raspberry Pi imager enables you to say from this device to this device? Because that's what I'm thinking. I could just do a copy from here to here. And then I've, uh, in air quotes, installed uh, the thing on my, uh, on my machine. Although technically there's two different file systems so no that probably wouldn't work anyway I, th I still think I want to ship this because I think this would be useful not least you'd be able to make backups with it um, so so I I'm tempted to go and actually make the change on the volume because I could see the need to reboot a couple of times and I don't want to blow people's eardrums out um, so I think I'll just quickly go and do that because I don't think this is going to take too long. So I'll just go into studio mode, go down to um, capture devices for the capture raw and there's the audio device. We'll add a filter. Oh, I have actually back I've backed back I've already had this idea and I've backed that off considerably so I will I will do it a bit more um, so I will make that considerably quieter okay okay well that's done Hopefully that won't make such such a noise. So I think what we'll do then is we will go and add that. We'll go and update the code um, for the image builder and refresh the image with that added. So let's get in here. Uh, actually, uh, we want this, don't we? So let's go and find, uh, I need to put the Raspberry Pi keyboard to one side at this point because this is where I will get horribly confused and be typing on the wrong keyboard. Um, so there's where we install the desktop and we will add in here Gnome Disk Utility like so. 
So this this here you can see what constitutes like a really bare bones um, desktop environment. Really trimmed down, very carefully installed without recommended packages to keep this as small as possible. So actually this this image for retro home with the desktop included is smaller than the pre-installed Ubuntu server image for the Raspberry Pi, which I'm quite pleased with. Um, part of the way in which we bootstrap the image in order to keep the, the size down. So we will rerun that. So this is in stage three. So what we can do is we can go back here. We can not do stages one and two and my script caches this. So what we'll do now is we will rebuild from that point and we'll go here and rerun the build. So that will do the remaining, that's the wrong, that's the wrong password because my password is test by the way. So there we go, that will, that will do the, the build um, and hopefully include the desktop in that one, uh, desktop, the disk manager in that one. So there we go. So whilst that's building, let's head back here. Um, so let's have a look. There was I saw some things here. Um, so Graham said, "Would this approach be any good?" Um, yeah. The so the only issue is this. Um, it would have to be a device to device copy. So a block device duplication, not a file system duplication. And that's because there's two partitions uh, in Retro Home. One is the firmware partition for the Raspberry Pi bootloader and kernel and device tree overlays. And that gets mounted over the top of the root file system. So there's those two file systems. So it needs to be a block um, duplication onto the target disk and I want to do this because I'd be interested to see at this point our image on the SD card is expanded to 64 gig if I put that image on a 2 terabyte image and it boots does GrowFS kick in again and expand that out to 2 terabytes because I, I think it should work but I've never tested it but it'll be a, uh, an interesting little experiment. Um, right, uh, let's have a look here. So King Egypt says, I seem to remember copying and running the SD card image of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, to the SSD after upgrading. So I assume they've pulled, so that's good to know. So maybe, after this image is built, we'll put it on a card, boot the thing up, put the Raspberry Pi imager, uh, you know, install install it in air quotes. And if that works, maybe I'll ship Retro Home with the Raspberry Pi imager rather than GNOME Disk Utility. That's probably the more sensible thing to do anyway. So whilst the image is building, we could go and add the code to do that. So I'll just get through some of these um, questions and we'll we'll consider that. Also, just feeling the desk pie for it's really cool. Ah, I love this case. I will be doing a stream where I build one of these live because they are cracking good. Right, okay. Uh, and then I think we're done here. Um, what have we got here? So, cube blocks. It looks like here. Let me have a look here. Cube block says, "Can I emulate Pi on x86 without a custom kernel?" Um, I think the answer to that question is yes. I think uh, QMU has the uh, machine um, syscall translations in QMU um, to do. To emulate a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. I don't know it can do a 4, but that doesn't really matter because, you know, if you're testing. And it is something I'm planning on adding to a project that we make here called Quick MU, 
which is a wrapper for QMU for hypervisor management. It makes optimized virtual machines for a ton of Linux and FreeBSD, but also Mac OS and Windows. Automatically downloads, configures, optimizes, does the whole thing so you don't have to. And one of the things I want to add to that is the ability to run Raspberry Pi um, operating systems in that um, in that VM manager. So I believe it's possible. I've certainly done some research to suggest that it is, and it's something I want to add to QuickMU in the future. And if you're wondering what QuickMU is, I have a convenient thing here. There we go, that should tell us. You can find out more there. Right then. Yeah, so Graham, I could. Uh, I don't like writing code if I if I can avoid it. So if the Raspberry Pi imager is going to do the right thing for us, I'm I'm totally down with um, doing that, um, taking advantage of it. Um, I think that will that will be a, an elegant an elegant solution. I wonder if we could. Mm, there's so many ideas. Right then. Uh, and Graham says, did you see you, uh, not not me, we, uh, won a Tuxi Award for Quick MU? Yes, I did. Chris contacted me the other evening. I was, it was disappointing I wasn't able to join in that um, live. Um, but yeah, he messaged me to let me know and I passed that on to the rest of the team that have been working on Quick MU. Yeah. Uh, I think it was we got second place as best new open source project of the year so yeah very happy with that outcome um, and I think it will be a good 2022 for quick MU we've got a number of interesting things lined up um, I probably need to catch up with that project too because it's been a couple of weeks we fixed those big problems with Windows 11 last time round and I think there's a few like niggles and things we need to merge but yeah that I'm I use quick MU all the time now um, it's I'm very happy with it and everyone that's contributing to it has been doing a, a fabulous job so a well-deserved award for every everyone involved I think <clears throat> So I was just scanning down the chat. Okay, right. <laughs> glad, glad you're finding it useful too. So let's take a look at this. So the image is still building. Um, let's do this. Let's bring up. Um, here, let's go and find the Raspberry Pi imager. Download uh, for Raspberry Pi OS. Oh, they don't actually. Oh, of course, I don't suppose they would, would they? Okay, I'm not going to do this today. This this alpha is going to go out with GNOME discs in it. I'll change this another day. Um, I'll go and hunt through their archive and find out where they actually publish the the package for this and write some stuff to suck it in but I'm, I won't get into that today because I want to get to the point where we have an image and we know it works. Uh, I wonder if I've got some a small selection of games let me just look here I'll just take this off screen a second let me see if I've got I did make a small collection here we go samples how big is this properties Oh, not too bad. 1.3 gig. Okay. I will when we when we test this one. Oh, mind you, the controller didn't work, did it? That was weird. I wonder if that's because the ports aren't. I'm gonna. I can test this, can't I? So let's um, let's test this whilst the image is building as well. Let's go um, to where the image is building. How's that doing? It's still going. So let's go to the capture view. And 
I need this keyboard now. <laughs> um, that is so loud, and yet I've tried to duck the audio. I don't need to app search. I just need to install. Um, oh, I do apologize. Uh, JS test GTK, I think. Uh, stores quite a bunch of stuff, but let's go with that. So we install this on the Pi and see if it can see the controller, because I was a bit confused as to why that, because this controller has been working and the one that I've been doing my testing with. So let's run JS test GTK. And sure enough, I must have done something wrong when I built this case because this is clearly not presenting these USB ports around the front. So let's do this. Let's um, let's plug <laughs> the controller in in a port around the back here, underneath the keyboard and mouse. And there we go. Now let's go back to the capture device and let's do a refresh. There we go. Now we have a controller. So I've clearly broken something when I did my uh, build on the case. So I'll have to revisit that and see what I overlooked. But now we've got that working, uh, it means I could actually put a few games on this image that we're building now and just make sure so all of the essential emulators. So what I've got here, I've got some arcade games, NES, SNES, Mega Drive Master System, Sega 32. So a decent enough broad cross section of stuff to just sort of prove things are working. Oh, except I have to, I'll have to fix the capture thingy because it messes with the performance. Otherwise, ugh, ugh, capture cards, hideous. Right, okay, so let's just go and have a look how that build is progressing. Ah, oh, it's compressing, it's nearly done. So, um, let's have a look here. So, King Egypt says it was the SD card copier app rather than the Pi Image. Oh, okay, so they've got an actual card copier app. Although the latter has loads of options, I've never used it. Okay. Yes, I've never, I didn't realize they had an actual card copier app. Um, I did write something like that a long time ago. I wonder if I've got that archived in GitHub. I made, I, I did start making uh, an imager for, for Ubuntu Mate a long time ago, like about five years ago. The, the code must be somewhere. I'll maybe look into that. That's a good bit of feedback, thank you. I'll do my homework on that one. Uh, okay, and thank you, Graham. This is useful information too. So our Pi Imager source and packaging scripts is on their GitHub. Great, I will take a look. Right, yes, perfect, thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for. So let's turn the Pi off. Unceremoniously, off it goes. Let's um, eject the SD card, put that in the computer. Right then. Let's uh, think, what have I got to do? I've got to... Um, That's the wrong, I'm in the wrong window. There we go, let's get inside the VM. There we go, let's try that again. So in this Pi directory, my images get built. Here it is. So let's write that with the image writer to there and start restoring. Restore, my password is test by the way. So once this is done, we'll then um, eject it from the virtual machine and then from the host, copy over some 
ROMs because um, that will be quicker than doing it over the network and I will need to know what IP address this is using so uh, yeah I can use NetDiscover to do that okay all right this is a bit of a faff but we'll we'll do it we'll actually make sure some games work um, and then we'll know we've got a good image so with regards to publishing the image publishing in air quotes at some point I'll create a website so the images can be downloaded from there but I was thinking maybe jam the image in Google Drive as a stopgap solution for this, you know, what is a first alpha image. Can anyone think of better ideas than sticking something in Google Drive um, for making uh, a almost 700 megabyte image available for download, which is going to be shared purely by word of mouth if you were here you will know about it and you know maybe in my discord as well i sort of share um the detail well i will share the details there so it's not going to be tons of people know about this version but i can't think of anything better than that i did used to use this platform called get but that shut down unfortunately github yeah I, so that's an interesting idea nano i I did wonder about that myself, but I don't know um, what their file size hosting limits are. Um, I mean, if I was to tag a release of this as Alpha 5, I could try attaching it as an asset, couldn't I? Should we find out? Should we learn together? Let's give it a go. Let's give that a go. So we've got a couple of things we need to try first. There's our image, so let's eject it from this reader here. This is where we get a little bit inception. So now we'll disconnect the pass through on the VM. And now I'll go to the, the host operating system, which is here. Uh, is that in the right place? It is. Okay. Uh, oh no, I've opened that inside the VM. Uh, here we go. So that's a file explorer here. And we'll now... Yep, okay. So this should be... This should be the file system for the machine and we've got storage retro ROMs. So that's where you put the ROMs for retro home. So let's just split screen that, <laughs> go over here and go to a different path, which is going to be a sync thing transfer ROM samples and then we will say take all of those and copy those to the other pane. There's not enough space, oh, of course, because the file system's <coughs> not expanded yet. Okay, that's fine. All right, that's fine. We'll demonstrate another feature of this in just a moment then. So I think I'll eject that um, and we'll Stick that in the Raspberry Pi again. Oops, put the card in the, the right way up even. That might help. Okay, so we will now turn on the Raspberry Pi again. We're expecting, dare I say it, glorious success because we, we know that that prior image worked and all we've done is add a single package. So we'll let this boot up. And then we'll try and do this over the network. Uh, let's think about this. Sam so Samba on the Raspberry Pi is just beyond atrocious. The performance is terrible. Or at least, it, uh, no, that's not true. It is terrible over Wi-Fi. Uh, do not bother trying to copy anything to a Raspberry Pi of any volume uh, that is over Wi-Fi. It's beyond terrible. Um, and I will... 
um, use, try and use the feature that I've built into Retro Home to copy ROMs to it over the network. So here it is, Retro Home's up and running. Um, let's see if I can use my host machine to find uh, what the IP or whatever is of that is. So if we go here, we'll um, we'll do this. So I think, hang on a minute, is everything on the same VLAN? Uh, yes. Uh, hang on. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, so we'll just go looking and hopefully we'll find a Raspberry Pi. There should only be one. There it is. So that's our IP address for for the machine. So if we quit that, we should be able to SSH as ludo at that address and accept the fingerprint and the password is retro. There we go. So we're SSH'd into the device, so that works fine. So now what we should be able to do is if I come back to um, the file manager on my local machine. Uh, did that open on the right desk? No, it didn't, it opened up there. But if I do this, I should be able to browse the network. There it is. I've put Avahi in there. So there is Retro Home, and here is the share for the ROMs. I should be able to connect anonymously. Excellent. We'll do this split pane arrangement again. We'll then go here, sync thing, uh, where was it? Transfer, ROM samples. We'll take all of those and say, copy to the other pane. So that is now copying all of those ROMs from my local machine to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi has got Samba set up and running. So this is, you know, the way to, you know, put stuff on the, on the device. And technically it works over Wi-Fi, but it is so slow, I think I could shout ones and zeros down the ethernet cable faster than the, the transfer runs. The, this, you know, runs in a reasonable amount of time. This is what, 1.3 gigabytes of data? That's not bad. What we do need to do though is, I think that this may be cached a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll, why I SSH'd in here, we will just run a sync to make sure that all of that gets flushed to disk. There we go. So we know that that's all actually being carried over just fine. You can also do a similar thing. Um, you don't just have to use uh, this, you can. Also, uh, let's think. Um, come on brain, what do I want to do? I want to do go computer. No, I don't want to do go computer. I want to do, Can where is it? Why is my brain freezing on this? There it is, connect to server. So we know the IP address was 131, I think the last octet was. So we should be able to do, this is because I'm on a VLAN, I don't have any DNS and what have you. So I could do slash, storage because that's where everything works and then we can do ludo retro remember this password and retro home ssh and connect now what was the ip 2.31 okay oh i've got a typo there we go let's try that again there we go. So now uh, we're connected over SSH as well. So you can also go in that way if you would rather. And there's the uh, there's all the directories and there's the, the stuff that we copied over. So these are the files that we copied over via Samba. Both work and actually SSH is faster than Samba out of interest. Don't know why, but there you go. 
So that's looking pretty good. So let's exit out of here. Let's go back to the capture view. So here's ah no, that's what we need to do. <laughs> I need to go back. We'll just come back here. Um, and did I close my terminal emulator like an idiot? I did. Okay, let's close that and this one. Let's start a new one of these. Okay. We will SSH back in. And what I'm going to do is just poke this um, to try and fix the capture. Um, what have I done wrong there? Is it... What my? Why have I got that wrong? Surely I've not configured this on a different display. Should work. Wow, well, that's a problem. Okay, well, the performance is going to be awful if I can't tweak that, but okay. Um, hmm, okay. Well, well, we'll just overlook that. We'll pick up the controller. And what we'll do is we'll go and scan. So add games. Um, don't want to scan that directory. We want to go to that's this is like one of the rough edges that it doesn't actually start the scan or it doesn't put you in the correct directory to start your scans. So we'll go into the ROMs directory and then we'll say scan here. So that is going to scan 371 games. This is doing two things. It's indexing the games uh, against, you know, some heuristics to see what platform they're for and whether they're supported by um, the cores that are available. And it also downloads some album art. So we'll come out here and now we have, this is, this is wrong. This is not a PlayStation game. Uh, we've got some Mega Drive games, some Master System games, Sega 32, SNES, NES. The N64 games don't work right now. I'm working on that with Upstream. And we've got some arcade games. So, um, this is going to suck. The performance, this is not going to be... I wonder if I can fix this. Why was that not presenting the display parameter? I think I might need to coerce my thing. But anyway, does the game load? It does. So how do I put a coin in? That one. There we go. And start. There we go. Oh, actually, this, uh, although it being offset, it's actually running. Oh, it's a bit slow. It's a bit slow. It's not quite running. Just, yeah, it's actually, that's, yeah. this is the problem I have with the capture card where the refresh rate is all out of whack. It forces the resolution off and then the emulation is really slow. If I correct this, it runs perfectly fine. But there we go, we've got a we've got a game working. Albeit my capture card messing with proceedings a little bit. This game is way easier at half speed. <laughs> right then, so that works. Um, I think I can press those two buttons. Yeah, so that will take me back here and I can tinker with the settings and go back and flip to a different game. So that all appears to be working. Um, so I see there's some comments. So let's just let's just take a little look here at what we got. So um, a couple of you have been doing some research on GitHub file limits. Looks like so Nano says there's two gigs free, but then goes on to say 50 megs per file, which is a bit of a problem. 
Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had to go and menace my daughter's boyfriend. <laughs> You're going to make yourself popular then. And then Graham goes on to say that GitHub says there's a two gig limit on files added, but we think that actually individual files can't exceed 50 based on what Nano was telling us. So maybe we're going to be a bit stuck there. Um, and Wimpy, uh, yeah, sorry, you're pointing out my typo. Thanks, Dex. Right, and um, right then, let's have a look here. So, Lucid Link says, What controller do you use with Retro Home? I think the thing that bothers me about emulation boxes most is the lack of original controllers. So, this um, Retro Home uses that um, big controller database. Um, I forget the name of it. But it's it's uh, I think it's part of SDL. I think it's the SDL controller into, uh, controller database, and it uses SDL for the controllers. So if it's a controller that SDL knows about, it should work. Uh, what I have found is that some of the controllers I have, I've got the Wolverine V2 and the V2 Chroma. None of those are in the neither of those are in the database for Linux currently. So I'm going to have to create the uh, strings to go in there. So I'm more than happy to do that. But at the moment, I'm just using a PowerAid Xbox One controller. Most Xbox controllers I've plugged into it just, just work. Um, but I've plugged in some random generic stuff and those work too. 8-bit uh, do stuff works. So generally, it, this was when I originally started Retro Home over a year ago, it was the... Uh, it only supported like six controllers and now it supports hundreds and hundreds so that was one of the reasons why I picked the project up again oh okay so Graham's got new information here okay good good <laughs> what do you mean not 1942 is one of the best arcade games made ever probably more sequels than the Street Fighter series. <laughs> so Graham says 50 megs for a file in the repo, but two gig for a file added to a release. Then our, there's our solution. So I think we'll go and do that. I think we will call this good enough. Uh, we will go and make a release of this thing. So let's go and do that. Let's go and do that, right? There's capture issues which no no one else is going to run into aside let's go and let's go and get this out there we know it's we know it's a bit rough around the edges do you really want to close this no i don't actually thank you for telling me i wonder if i can do i wonder if i can do that and then No. Weird. Okay, I'm going to have to look into that. I think I can do it through the desktop session, but not here. So I need to look into why that's the case. So what we're we going to do, we're going to... <laughs> Thank you for the follow, MB Dealer. Thank you, MB Dealer, and welcome to the stream. Um, we like a bit of Linux around here. If you like a bit of Linux... Uh, let us know in chat what distro uh, do you use. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Nipsticks. And also welcome to Nipsticks. Thanks very much for stopping by. Welcome to the stream. Same question to you. If you uh, like a bit of Linux, what distro uh, are you using? Um, right then. Uh, I. So, hey, <laughs> hey, Baron, how you doing? Right then, let's do this thing. So I want to go here. I'm gonna uncomment those lines and save that. And I'm gonna go and look at Git Kraken and I'm not gonna commit everything that's outstanding, just what we need here. So none of this, oh, so we're gonna add that because that's our 
adding GNOME disks and we're going to add that. So we'll call that the Alpha 4 changes because all of this is handheld stuff that isn't ready to go out yet. So here it is. We'll say add uh, GNOME disk utility. Commit that change. push that up we will then tag no I'll do this I'll do this all on github now so let's go to here <laughs> and prepare a release oh we've got some pull requests how exciting detect app cacher on parent okay I won't look at that one just yet because I don't want to mess with this but we'll have we'll have readme changes that's great thanks Phil Phil's brilliant he's been all over a load of projects that we've been working on <clears throat> so we'll take that and well let's have a quick look at his other pull request because Maybe this is something I want to include. <clears throat> Although I'm not expecting anyone else to build. <clears throat> or is this a VM and... Oh, okay. I'll come back to that one. I don't want to. I don't want to merge that hastily because I haven't. I haven't looked at it too carefully. Right then, let's do a release. And this is Alpha 5. So, create a new release. Uh, this is going to be 21.10 Alpha 5. <clears throat> Alpha 5, right. I don't think that's going to... Well, actually, that's good. There's a bunch of stuff from other people there, so we'll keep all of that in there. That's good. Uh, we will say this. Initial um, generic image for Raspberry I two three four and four hundred initial twenty one ten alpha five. There we go. Wonderful. Uh, this is a pre release. I think that's fair. Well, well, we'll tick that box. We don't want to give people the impression that this is anything other than an alpha, because it very much is. But, can we add assets here? Oh. Uh, do I do that here? Oh yeah, there it is. Attach binaries. Uh, oh, it's in the VM. Okay, not a problem. We know how to do this. Uh, let's do this. We'll pick up that image and that SHA out of the VM. Copy. And drop that in public. Paste. So this is copying it from the VM to my host machine. And now we'll go back to this web browser. And choose files. And hopefully in public we can now grab those two and say open. 
and update the release. If we can release these through GitHub, I mean, uh, how do I know if anything's happening? Hmm. Did that do the right thing or did I do that wrong? Because I see no evidence that that's doing anything. Hmm. <laughs> Nipstick says, I don't understand any of this. I just learned the basics for programming. Uh, well, what we're working on here, Nipsticks, is a new Raspberry Pi operating system for um, retro gaming. And this is the first alpha release uh, that people will be able to download and put on their um, Raspberry Pis and test. So why is this attach binaries by dropping them here so this will be will be deleted undo what oh okay is this just saying I need to um, 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 um public so let's drop you there. Attachment with that file name already exists. Okay. I'm very confused. Is this uploading? Will be deleted. Okay. Update release. Let's let's remove these things. Assuming that there's no files here and edit attach files by dragging and dropping selecting or pasting them attach binaries by dropping them here okay let's try this again let's try our hash to start okay and then we'll do the next one drag the big one in Ah, now it's uploading. There we go. There we go. That's what we were looking for. Right. Confusion. Confusion overcome. So, um, yeah, here we go. We've got, This is the very first version. I guess at some point uh, I'll have to update the README to explain to people what they need to do uh, in order to put this on a uh, SD card or whatever for, to run it on a Raspberry Pi to test it. Um, those of you already in the know will know what you need to do with uh, with that image. Um, but yeah, this is good. Uh, I expect a deluge of bug reports <laughs> over the Christmas period. <laughs> Probably not actually. Experience tells me most people are not doing very much stuff um, in uh, in the Christmas period at all on their on their computers so I expect it to be uh, pretty quiet but um, it'll be good to get some feedback I'm sure there'll be some enthusiastic community members who will want to uh, want to have a play well at some point during this stream twitch decided that my uh, my bandwidth is fine I don't know what was going on at the beginning I don't think anyone suffered for it but I don't like it when twitch sells me bandwidth is unstable more perplexing because I got a free upgrade on my fiber recently so I've got 50 meg upload now uh, which is more than enough for, for what I'm doing here right come on it's nearly there nearly 600 meg I'll tell you what if this is what we're able to do um, I know Luke has left his, he, his family had arrived so um, <laughs> um, but yeah maybe we can actually automate this in github because oh gosh no because of containers because it will build in yeah uh, I wonder how we're going to automate this maybe we automate it in some other fashion maybe we need to run the builds on for example DigitalOcean and then use the GitHub APIs to do the release process. Um, so, King Egypt says, 
Bug reports and tuna salad. Merry Christmas. Yes, indeed. Tuna, tuna salad is now a family tradition for us. Although um, it's two o'clock here now. Um, I will be going downstairs and doing roast chicken, parsnips, roast potatoes, stuffing, bread sauce, sprouts, the the full work. So that's what we'll be eating eating this evening. Um, but tuna salad on Christmas Day. And then uh, Nipstick says, how and where do I start if I want to develop games? That's an excellent question. Um, there's lots of different game engines uh, that you can use. Um, Unity 3D is very popular and there's lots of learning material for it. Uh, I recently wrote a game for the first time in like 30 years as uh, I took part in a game jam and I used the Godot engine, G-O-D-O-T. Some people pronounce it Godot, some people pronounce it Godot. I don't know which is the correct way. I used Godot and it was fabulous and I found loads, well, first of all, their documentation was excellent and there's loads of videos on YouTube about how to do different things with the Godot game engine. And I spent a week teaching myself Godot and then I spent two weeks writing a game. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So based on my own experiences, I would say give Godot a go. It's a completely open source game engine. Um, so it doesn't cost you anything to actually, you know, get started with it. So answer your question hopefully right then let's update the release and now let's look down here check this snizzle out look at that we've only gone and got an image in there i tell you what was it nano that suggested github i think it was you originally suggesting this thank you for making that suggestion this is a million times better than what i thought i might end up doing so thank you for that that's excellent so there it is it's out in the wild you can all go and download it and give it a try and um, file bugs uh, welcome bug reports better yet file bugs and pull requests that fix them uh, would be fab <laughs> yes nano well all, all this is one of the reasons why I do these things in this way you know doing doing the various projects that we work on in this community here in this way means that um, everyone has a voice some people can code some people can do translations because they speak multiple languages you know and some people just have good ideas so <laughs> thank you for your good idea um, uh, that's this is uh, a great way to uh, make the download available so thank Thank you for that love it <laughs> yeah waking up to a great milestone there it is hello eric welcome back so there it is it's available for people to download and stick on their raspberry pi um we have a discord server i will just um put the magic incantation in uh in chat now um we have over 2,000 people in there now astonishingly um, and we have a channel for Retro Home where we can discuss its development, testing, feedback and all of that. So we have one specifically for that and we have you know, some just for Linux user chat and some for developer chat uh, and some for broadcasting and streaming, you know, how we do all of this. I'm using, in fact that's the other thing I, I failed to mention, I'm using a, a, a new custom build of OBS. Uh, to do these live streams here now. This is a proving ground for something that I'm I'm working on uh, or will be working on in the new year um, for OBS on, on Linux. So Eric says um, they, uh, they just need a Raspberry Pi 4. Well, uh, it will work on a Raspberry Pi 2 or a Raspberry Pi 3. So if you have either of those, you can run Retro Home on there. Uh, you should be able to run all of the 8-bit stuff and most of the 16-bit stuff on a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 just fine. Uh, the more demanding newer consoles will need a Pi 4, but you know if you just want to get some NES and SNES and Genesis, Mega Drive and sort of 
uh, arcade machine stuff, sort of classic 8-bit um, and early 16-bit arcade machines. Those are run on a 3. Fine. The testing that I did, I did that 15,000 game performance testing stream a few weeks back. I used a Raspberry Pi 3 for that. It was excellent. So, there, well, there we go. Um, I will be... So, Dex also says they need a Raspberry Pi now. Um, so, what I'm going to be doing is... Um, to make it easy for people that don't have Raspberry Pi yet, I'm going to be putting up uh, part lists um, of what I'm using. So, for example, I have this as one of my test machines and this is a Raspberry Pi 4 um, 4 gig model um, you don't need the fan that was me testing a driver that I wrote but that's a super compact you know Raspberry Pi 4 in a case um, that's a great way to test these things out so that's the um, what are they called I've forgotten the name of the company that makes these now um, they make the Neo and the One don't they can't remember the the parent organization but they make nice cases but I'll put up a different spec versions of different Raspberry Pi's different memory capacities different cases different SD cards all of which are things that I know to be good quality and enable you to build a Raspberry Pi at different budgets and price points right then um, so if you just want like the easiest thing to do is just get a Raspberry Pi 4 um, because yes that's right Graham it's the Argon Argon cases um, Argon Neo and Argon 1 so if you just want the simplest solution get a Raspberry Pi 4 a Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gigabytes of RAM or more is more than enough um, to get you started a 32 gig card will be more than enough to jam thousands of like um, 8 bit and 16 bit console games on there if you want to get into PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 games and things like that then you need a lot more storage which is why I've put two terabytes in my desk pie here because I do want to have a go at some uh, PS1 games and what have you but you know you can literally do it at any budget um, and it's the storage just limits the number of games that you can play but a 2 gig Raspberry Pi 4 is like your guaranteed good good experience entry point the more RAM you have then the, the you know the more you can do with it um, but I've tested on the Pi 3 which only has a gig of RAM so uh, and that ran the desktop in retro home and it runs all of the emulators uh, that currently work just fine and I'm wor working on fixing the ones that that don't or, or at least with upstream the upstream have been extremely helpful actually um, does it work with a PS3 controller I haven't tried um, uh, a PlayStation 3 controller um, so I don't know but I have seen in the controller database that SDL uses all of the PlayStation controllers so I think it might but I can't guarantee it um, so uh, give it a go and report back <laughs> if you've already got a, P uh, a controller just try it just try it out uh, and let us know and if it doesn't you can file bugs on Retro Home. I mean, that isn't, strictly speaking, the right place. But at least I've got a note of stuff that doesn't work. Because I am going to assemble all of my controllers that I've got. Because I've got quite the collection. And at some, and I've also, through Quick MU, I've got the means to generate controller strings on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So where controllers are missing from the database that I have, and I know some of them are missing for controllers that I own, I'm planning on like submitting a whole bunch of controller strings to build out the compatibility um, because I've got a load of controllers for these retro things like um, Mega Drive and PlayStation controllers that I want to make sure work. 
Right then. Let's take a look over here a second. Um, reload that. So is anyone uh, is anyone cooking something delicious later today like what I am planning on doing? Or, uh, just I'm just looking to see who else is streaming, seeing if there's somebody, oh there's me. <laughs> if there's anyone um, doing anything along similar lines who, uh, ah well somebody was asking about here we go. This this looks this looks good. This looks good. Seeing as though somebody was asking about game development recently, just now in the chat, who was it? Uh, I've lost your name in the. Oh, Nipsticks. Here we go. We'll we'll do this. So thank you all very much for coming. Um, I am hoping to stream once more before Christmas but I don't know if that's going to be tonight or tomorrow but I'm not guaranteeing it <laughs> but hopefully I'll squeeze one more in before Christmas and then I won't be streaming until late in December oh what's going on here that's the wrong place entirely to do that I want to do this let's try that right then uh, okay that that's fine um, oh well it's not letting me do that because their audience guidelines are very different from my own oh bother oh well I think I think then today we will we will not do a raid because I'm not seeing anything else. I'll just try one last time to to do this one. I want to know why that didn't work. Let's try using this this button. Try and do that. There we go. No, it doesn't want to do it. it. Doesn't want me to raid these people. Well, that's unfortunate. Sucks to be them. Right. Um, Thank you all for coming. Hopefully I will see you one last time before Christmas. If I don't, have a splendid holiday season, whatever you're doing and wherever you are, barbecues on the beach in Australia or turkeys in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> um, but hopefully I'll see you one last time. And if I do see you one last time, I'm gonna show you a game that I wrote and it's not the one you're thinking of. So that's what I'll be doing in the next stream. Um, oh, it's going to let me raid. Here we go. It's going to let me do it. We're doing it. We're going to go raiding. We're going to go raiding. Um, and we're off. Uh, no, we're not. Oh, who knows? Thank you all for coming. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>